Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM and the ID 51A dual band handheld. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash ham nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 64 for September 12th, 2012. Bull. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ham Nation, episode 64. Got a great show lined up with you tonight. Uh, Bob is having a little internet problems right now. We hope he'll be in here shortly, though. He's been on the road for the last several weeks, and we're really looking forward to getting him back. We do have Gordon West out in California, though. Uh, Gordon? Um, we are here, and we're looking forward to tonight's show. You'll notice uh, Ham Nation viewers and those listening, uh, you can hear the cattle in the background. We've got Clayton Cullen, W6 Charlie, Echo Charlie with the Bull Riders Association. He's going to be Bob's special guest, and they right now are uh, out roping a little better internet connection, but we had them earlier, and you're going to enjoy them. And we've got all sorts of things going on about bull riding, and um, I've been told, though, that that uh, this does not qualify as bull riding, but rather a um, little cow riding. But uh, we'll have more about that shortly. So, uh, George, I'll let you go ahead and uh, officially start things. Thanks to our Ham Nation viewers and Internet, uh, uh, those of you in the chat room for watching us and uh, beaming us your thoughts. And we've got a great show coming up for you. George, back to you, partner. Oh, we've got a lot of other things going on tonight, too, Gordon. You know, uh, tonight is the night that we give away the great ICOM IC7000 radio and the uh, Comet $250 antenna package and the Diamond $250 antenna package. Uh, winner has been selected, and we'll be announcing that a little bit later in the show. We'll have Ray Novak from ICOM America in here to help us do the honors on that. And plus, you'll get to see our favorite picks of uh, all the mobile installations that came in. And it was really hard. There were so many good installations there. Uh, I would encourage you to go look. That's at the um, Facebook uh, Smoke and Solder group. Go in there and uh, have a look around. It's too late to enter the contest or to vote now. But if you'd like to post some of your pictures on there, after the show tonight, we'll be making that active again where you can do that. Uh, also tonight... I'm going to finish this MFJ shortwave receiver kit that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. We'll get to find out if it actually works. Uh, what do you think, Gordo? Do you think this works? Well, I've got it tuned in, so if I can hear your regen receiver all the way uh, via Skywave, I know it's working. But, you know... Nothing wrong with regenerative receivers. They have generally even better sensitivity than a good old uh, single-stage superhead. So I can't wait to hear that uh, baby play. And for shortwave listening, it's going to be a good one, George. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it, it is. And, uh, boy, these things are hot as a firecracker. Uh, a little bit hotter if you turn that knob too far right there. Uh, what, have you, <laughs> what have you got tonight in the way of short? Uh, I almost said short shorts. Short shots, Gordo. <laughs> yeah, i got to be careful on that one. Well, we'll have Alex go ahead and roll them, but tonight it is heads up on that mobile installation for safety. So, Alex, uh, go ahead and roll some heads up. And what we mean by heads up is, first of all, your antenna needs to be up high to bring that 50 ohm impedance to 50 ohms so get it on either a trunk lid mount but don't put the hf down there on a mount that is too low because it'll never look like 50 ohms and you'll never get it tuned up that's on the diamond k400 mount okay the hf inside the mobile unit if it's a detachable head make sure that the body is well grounded not with a little number 14 wire but good 
copper strap. Uh, even plumber's strap will work. Now, here's our heads up. This is a heads up display where it's two meters and 440. And notice that it's right there at dash level. So whether I'm looking at the radio or the ab map that is tied in to the Kenwood radio, I don't take my eyes too far off the road. Now, here's another heads up in Suze's car. Uh, this is the dual band uh, ICOM, and uh, we've got it up uh, nice and high. This has the built-in GPS capabilities, and uh, this radio just does great. But again, notice it is mounted up high, so we're not taking our eyes off the road to see either what's on the screen or what channel we've dialed in. It's a heads-up display. Here's the dune buggy, and again, a heads-up display. It's not down there by the gear shift, but rather nice and high. So if we need to uh, change frequencies, whether it's HF or on VHF or UHF, we've got that heads-up display up high, so you're not taking your eyes off the road and looking down at that radio. Here's a communications fan, and while there's a lot of gear down low, the principal radio, and again, there's the ICOM 706, one of my real favorites, is up nice and high. And as we go higher and higher, there's the voltmeter, and higher yet, there is the heads-up display. It's as, as high as I could get it, uh, yet still be uh, out of the view on the dashboard so I have unlimited visibility but as you can see while driving either passenger or driving just a glance at the radio head and you've got a great heads up display and with any heads up remote display don't forget the filters because on many radios Yesu and ICOM radios with a remote head when you transmit all of a sudden, the radio goes dead. That's not a fault of the radio, but rather RF from a nearby antenna getting into this, and that is the cord, the multi-conductor cord that goes between the head and the body of the radio. So put all sorts of filter chokes in. And even maritime mobile operators that are looking at radar, aircraft pilots that are looking at their instruments, it is always heads up. Don't put them down so low that you've got to take your eyes off the road and not be able to see what you should be doing, and that is driving. So, again, heads-up display for safety. Okay, George, back to you, and we'll see you a little bit later after we do a roundup of Bob and Clayton. Go ahead, George. Okay, Gordon. Great tips there on doing the heads-up. You know, I need to do that. That IC7000 I've had sitting back here for uh, the last several episodes. I've moved that over to my main operating position now because I'm programming it up and uh, just learning all the features I can on it because I'm about to put it in the mobile. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind, heads up. Where can I put that thing as high as possible? Because the rig that's in there now, I do have to look down, and that's not a good thing. I, I believe we have, uh, well, do we have Bob yet, Alex? Uh, he's online. We're calling him now, but it's not guaranteed that it will work yet. Okay. Well, i tell you what. I think I saw Leo running around the studio earlier. Do you think he has a special message for us from ICOM? I think he does. Hello, hands. Leo Laporte here hmm, to interrupt your fine program for a word from our sponsor. I don't have to tell Gordo or Bob or George, or anybody, how great ICOM is. We're all ICOM here. We're an ICOM ham shack here at the Brick uh, Twit House. Thanks primarily to Ray Novak uh, at ICOM, who very kindly set us up. And, man, did he set us up. And, in fact, I got to say, it's almost like Christmas with all the new gear uh, coming out from ICOM. Last week, we talked about this IC7100 from ICOM. Today, ICOM's latest D-Star Portable. Have you played with D-Star yet? D-Star is so cool. We have a D-Star. I know we have a D-Star net uh, after the show every week. Uh, after ICOM got such rave reviews in the ID31A and hearing uh, about how dual band in a D-Star Portable would be like heaven, they have decided to introduce a brand new D-Star Portable. Wait for it. Drum roll, please. The D-51A dual band handheld with D-Star. They announced it at the uh, Hamfest in Tokyo last month alongside uh, that 7100 we talked about. So two band, but not just two bands, two bands simultaneously, digital on one band, analog on the other, or 
two analog bands at the same time. Uh, if you're a current D-Star user that you want, and but you want a portable that will give you D-Star and everything else, this is absolutely great. Uh, especially if you're an analog user interested in digital mode operation, you can do both at the same time. Um, the new radio, of course, keeps a lot of the features from the very, very popular D30 or ID31A um, DV mode, D-Star DV mode standard, GPS built-in for reporting and logging. Uh, you can actually put a micro SD card in for extended storage, and it makes data cloning a snap. You just put it in some, you know, somebody else's radio and take it over. Um, this is not right, is it? It's IPX7 submersible. You could. Put I'm not sure why you'd want to, but you could uh, you could submerse uh, submerse your, uh, your your ID51A for up to uh, 30 minutes in a meter of water. I wish my iPhone could do that. Uh, what else? What's new? Well, sl slimmer dimensions than the 31A, which was already pretty teensy weensy. Uh, very nice. You got to see the full dot matrix uh, LCD display. Very nice. 1,750 memory channels, 1,750 memory channels. That's 500 more than the 31A, and uh, the beautiful menu-driven user interface, really great to use. Extended coverage and capabilities, too, you'll find in the ID51A. It's perfect for hams that want a VHF, UF, UHF capable dual bander and D-Star. Uh, independent AM, FM broadcast receiver to get broadcast stations as well. This is a great mobile rig. Throw your radio out. I mean, you're, you know, I am from radio out. Don't throw this radio out. Voice memory. Voice memory. You can record incoming and outgoing calls or as a voice recorder. Great way to log your DX uh, or your QSOs. Improved auto response, enhanced logging functions. Great for emergencies and contesting. Speaking of contesting, you've got one touch voice playback for contest transmissions. Built in D Star repeater directory, advanced search function. I can go on and on. You know what you should do is you should go to uh, icomamerica.com. In fact, go to, uh, we have a special landing page, icomamerica.com slash hamnation. And uh, you get more information on the, the ID51A D-Star dual band handheld with built-in GPS. And get in that drawing for Icom swag, T-shirts and hats and great stuff. Uh, congratulations to our winners for previous weeks to check out the winning participants. See if your name's on that list, icomamerica.com slash ham nation and that link says view last week's winners and you can check to see if your name is in there thank you icom thank you very much once again you're hitting this out of the park great stuff from icom now back we go to ham nation which is already in progress well thank you leo great to see you on here tonight uh bringing the ad to us and that is a nice looking radio i have not seen that one yet so i'll have to see if I can can run across one of those and play with it a little bit. Notice someone in the chat room mentioned that we're pushing D-Star really hard. Well, there's a reason for it, isn't it, Gordo? Uh, I believe we've got that uh, D-Star QSO party coming up real soon. We do. A week from this coming Friday uh, with the D-Star QSO party. Not this Friday, but a week from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Three days of making great contacts with the uh, D-Star users all over the world. And we have a D-Star user that is planning to introduce some kids to talk to other kids at other schools, specifically on D-Star. And you know, that's one of the neat things about the D-Star system. It allows us to go almost direct and almost guarantees that we're going to make a contact independent of HF conditions if they're halfway across the country. So a lot of kids are getting interested in D-Star. And one of the chat room comments is, um, what can we do to turn kids on on ham radio? And certainly D-Star including the GPS capabilities that it has, plus the capabilities of this brand new equipment to be able to self-download repeaters that's built into its memory function. That's wonderful. I wish more radios would do that. ICOM is a first to have it find out where it is, go to its own database and say, I've got seven repeaters in the area, load them in, and then you have D-Star repeaters right there at your fingertips. Back to you, George. Oh, thanks, Gordo. Uh, I'm going to have to get in on that event. Uh, I tried it last year. I was brand new to D-Star, and I didn't have everything programmed up just right. But I'm going to get in there this year, and we hope to catch you on the air there. Alex, have we heard from Bob yet? 
we have him up. Uh, not sure if it will work, but we can try. Okay. Bobby there. We'll get some audio happening for you. See if this works. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll get her going here. Something uh, in the stars is not with us tonight. <laughs> but uh, we're there. How's it look, Alex? You okay? Yeah, it looks good here. Good. Maybe they got something happening. <laughs> we threatened it with some uh, words a while ago. <laughs> uh, greetings to everybody. I'm not sure where we are, but uh, I am here with Clayton Cullen, W6CEC. And Clayton is a production manager of the Professional Bull Riders. Uh, a, a lot of you that uh, are fans of the PBR know it well. For you that don't, you need to. It's the fastest growing sport in America. And this guy is the guy that runs it all. Clayton, it's really nice to have you. And, and what, what I'm so impressed with you is that you're a new ham. How long ago did you get your on license? On field day was my one-year anniversary. Wow. I uh, actually got my ticket uh, on field day, but a year ago. So I've been a ham for one year now. Now, you and I have known each other for many years, and uh, I always told you how cool this hobby was, but it was only until Ham Nation that you got all ready that to go. That was it. That was it, and you sent me some of Gordo's stuff and uh, studied it up and went and took the test, uh, passed my technician and general in the same day, and then went back about two weeks later and, and got my extra. That's, that's amazing. That's just amazing. I, uh, I'm really happy about all that you have done. Well, one of the things that we want to show everyone is what you did to your mobile. You, you had, I remember when you called me and you said, um, what rig should I get? And immediately I said a 706. I, I just don't think there's a better radio for the money right now. And right. They're hard to find because they're not made anymore. And you did that. And I then did. what happened? You put it in the truck and? <laughs> uh, well, after I, I got another radio for the house, I was actually using that 706 Mark II G for my base. And uh, so then uh, after I got a radio for the house, I put it into my truck. It's a great mobile rig. I mean, just fantastic. And a good friend of mine that I know sent me a screwdriver antenna <laughs> that used to be on his Hummer. yellow Hummer. <laughs> and uh, uh, Bob said, uh, I'll send you this screwdriver on one condition. you got to paint it to match your truck. I said, I can do that. So I did. So I've got the 706 with the screwdriver. And uh, after I hooked it up, if, uh, if I ran the, the antenna up to 80 meters and tried to broadcast, uh, I had strange things happening in the truck. I could make every light light up on my dash. I could turn the truck completely off, key off, key out, and uh, key up the radio, and I could still hear relays clicking mm. under the dash. And I'm going, this is not good. Uh, and it would lock up my stereo oh. completely. I mean, it would just wouldn't even turn back on. I'd have to go do a fuse pull and then put the fuse back in, and then I'd get the stereo back. So obviously I had an RF issue uh, leaking into the cab. So I did uh, did a lot of research on it and uh, asked. Just basically got on the air with a bunch of a bunch of my ham buddies and and threw the the problem out there and listened to everything they had to say and uh, started applying some of them and found the solution. That's great. Well, I, we got some uh, really good pictures that you had sent. So if Alex will start uh, running through those, you can narrate those. For yep. Us. There's the the screwdriver painted up to match my my truck. Uh, that's sitting in my driveway there, and that, then I've also got the uh, the two meter 440 antenna on the front. But there's the screwdriver uh, on the back. Uh, mounted it uh, just inside the bed, uh, right uh, inside the tailgate there, and just works really, really slick. There's the the base of it, and you can see now it's got 213 coax and that nice braid that uh, uh, grounds everything. And that was the key to finding the RF issue was getting that thing grounded, and then. I had to bond every piece of metal on the truck. There's the the install inside. I'm a, I'm a little bit fussy about the way I do things. Uh, I kind of think they need to look neat and clean and tidy and not a bunch of wires hanging around. And and so that's the removable head on the 706. Uh, and you might notice, uh, I recognize that microphone hanging there beside <laughs> yeah. it, Bob. That's a, a Heil handy mic. And, and uh, I did some blind tests on the air and everybody told me that that mic far exceeded the stock mic. So that's the way I run it right there. And this is the bonding that I did. This is from the door to the cab. I just took some uh, one-inch braid 
and uh, bonded both sides. And I did this all over the entire truck. We've got a bunch of different pictures of it. But this bonds uh, every piece of sheet metal and all the way back to the antenna through the frame. This is uh, the, the rear door. The other one was a front door. This is the stock bonding that came on the truck. I didn't think that was enough, so the next shot should be the other side. Uh, nope, that's underneath again. Uh, this is just more of the bond, bonding the bed to the frame. There's the other side of the hood right there. Mm -hmm. Just uh, took off one of the bolts on the hinge and put the strap on there so that I got good solid bonding from the hood to the cab, the doors to the cab. Uh, the interesting thing, uh, we have a shot of it here in just a little bit. Um, no, that's the bed to the cab. And mm -hmm. uh, that one right there, nope, that's uh, another uh, bed uh, bonding, bonding the bed to the frame. That one right there. Now, this is kind of interesting, and I hadn't really thought about it. But again, just talking to some of, the, some of the guys on the air, they said you need to bond that tailpipe. If you notice that big rubber insulator right there, it, it kind of insulates the tailpipe. So it kind of acts like a big antenna sitting underneath sure. your car for picking up RF and running it right back into the cab. So I, this uh, the braid that you see goes all the way up to the antenna, and I just uh, scuffed off a spot, brightened it up, and put a hose clamp on it and bonded the tailpipe to the rest of the, the bonding system. And uh, that, uh, doing all of this bonding and the, the coax solved the problem. I, I've never had a click or anything inside the cab. This is my home shack. That's really beautiful. And, and again, you, you've, you've barely been licensed a year and look at this great station. Uh, what do you think about that, Gordon, from one of your students? How about that? I love it. Big Kenwood 940, looking good. Station SM220, maybe that's the 230. Big KW amplifier, mixer, wahoo! Pretty cool. The Heil PR40 microphone <laughs> and the, the uh, key switch there, the hand switch. That's great. That's great. Well, I, I personally am really proud of what you've done. And uh, as we've known each other all these years and... Bingo, you, uh, you've you really come a long way. But, of course, you, you've you had a lot of experience with grounding and, <laughs> and audio and video right, and all of that, right, right. far exceeding uh, a bunch of us crazy hams. That's why we call them amateurs. You know? Right. <laughs> but, uh, my goodness, you have... Uh, a, a tremendous uh, production. Uh, with, how many uh, how many shows are you doing this year on this? We do uh, 29 regular shows plus, so we do five performances of our finals in Las Vegas. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So all of these are like from 10,000 to 20,000 people, right? Yeah, yeah. And we do. Uh, we also play Cowboy Stadium, and uh, we do upwards of 40,000 people for wow. one night show in Cowboy Stadium. And, and I can tell you, it's. Uh, it, as everybody watching here knows, I do a lot of rock things, and I have for decades. I never heard anything this loud. When that bull comes out of the chute, <laughs> and you get 18,000 people screaming, and the bulls are hollering, and the, uh, all of the fans, it's just incredible, the, the, the noise inside there. And it, it all seems like it's at the same frequency. That's, that's yeah. the other thing. And music, it's all over the spectrum. Here, it's right here. And uh, you do a great job with uh, your new sound system. Well, thank you. It yeah. really works. But we're so, uh, so happy to have you in the amateur radio uh, uh, fraternity. And, and as we get around, I'm sure you'll talk to a lot of the people that are watching us here tonight and are listening on the podcast and uh, as you go through each town. But I, I want all of you to go to, to PBR uh, w website, and that's Professional Bull Riders. Uh, check out their tour schedule, and if they come to your town, you got to find uh, find a way to get in there and see it. Uh, there's always it's a fun show. Yeah, it we really we is. always say we have something for everybody from the babies all the way up to grandmas. Yeah, and yeah. the other thing is the front half of the show is uh, it's all loaded with with great entertainers: Eric Church, Kenny Chesney. Uh, they open the show, so you really get to see a lot of musicians. You know, we did Toby Keith in uh, uh, Cowboy Stadium uh, two years ago. Uh -huh. And, um, yeah, we, we have a lot of big-name entertainment that goes right. along with us. And that's kind of where uh, 
Heil Sound comes in and some of the microphones for that. But uh, they use PR35 so they can cut through all that noise. It seems to work. It, it? it works <laughs> outstanding. <laughs> well, Clayton, thanks so much for coming uh, to the house here. This is the first time I've had anybody here. And when you know, we had problems in the beginning with our <laughs> internet here, but it looks like we're okay. And uh, yes, this is uh, what we wear when we go to the PBR uh, along with all the other cowboys. And uh, You have to tell them about your shoes when you go to a PBR event. Well, you don't wear your purple. Well, they won't. He <laughs> won't let me wear my purple Converse, so I had to buy some uh, some cowboy boots. I'm sorry, but I, you know, I, I just that's what I wore. But he said you, you're not allowed on the dirt with those Converses. <laughs> <laughs> made a cowboy out of you. Yeah, that's You made right. a ham out of me, and I made a cowboy out of you. You got it. Thanks very much. Gordo, what do you think? We're, uh... I, I think it's great. And uh, Clayton, um, for your bulls, uh, we have Mama Bull uh, called Cowabunga, and we brought that uh, just for you. And uh, Clayton, I, I realize that it's a great installation of that 706, but when you uh, got your head down there adjusting uh, that radio, this is maybe all they'll see uh, over the windshield. So be thinking about maybe getting it up at eye level. But anyway, have fun, Clayton, and I love that station, both of them, both mobile as well as your base. Back to you, Clayton. Uh, we just lost Bob and Clayton uh, right as they finished talking. <laughs> okay, he froze and he's gone. Well, anyway, it uh, points out that uh, hams come from many different walks of life, and Bob's got a, a new recruit, one year as a ham operator, and uh, gave us some good, important points. And You know, nothing beats a lot of bonding in those vehicles. So, George, back to you, and I know you've got more things up your uh, cowboy sleeve. George? <laughs> Hi, Gordo. I'm just not going to get to show them my fancy hat tonight. Uh, oh, well, maybe Bob will make it back in later. Let's see where we left off here. Um, we were going to do some Show Me Your Shack tonight. Uh, are you familiar with what we've got there, Gordo? Oh, I absolutely am. So um, I'm always ready for Alex. He likes uh, throwing uh, photos at me. And between the two of us, uh, we'll uh, do a little show me your shack. And uh, here's our first one. Uh, that's a picture of George a couple weeks ago. And um, wow, that's that's all right. That goes way <laughs> back. That's a good, uh, good shot. Again, all the radio up there at eye level. All right. Next one, Alex. Let's see what we got here. It's a nice shot here. Oh, there's a nice clean shack, and uh, it's got um, well, it's got a ham nation in the background. Anyway, it's got the log book there, and I always encourage folks, keep a log of all your contacts because you never know when you've got to go through that log, and maybe one of them's going to break a record. All right, next one, Alex. And um, wow, now this one. Um, that's, I may that's need little, help on, on this one, but anyway, uh, if, uh, he's big on mixers, he certainly has it in front of them. Probably one of, uh, Bob Heil studio shots. All right. I don't see any ham rigs there. <clears throat> and, there's our uh, friend, Tom. Yeah, Tom I know who that, is. that was, uh, that was from Dayton at uh, contest university where he was streaming it live. Ah, okay, good. All right, and take over, George, because you probably recognize more of these than I do. Go ahead, George. That's the first I've seen him, Gordo. Let's see what we've got there next. Uh, that's <laughs> W-A-0-D-J-A. I've talked with him on the air before, Gordo. Haven't, haven't you uh, had a QSO? Oh, or four, or four, four. Okay, uh, next one. <laughs> That's great. That was it? Well, that's it. Um, so, George, uh, those were some great Show Me Your Shacks. But those of you out in the uh, chat room, as well as those uh, picking up this uh, podcast, send us those photos. And, again, if you've got videos, post them on YouTube and let Julian, N3JF at ARRL.net, know that you've posted them. He'll look them up, and we'll see if we can include them here for upcoming Ham Nation show shots. Back to you, George. Well, Don Wilbanks couldn't be with us live tonight, but fortunately, we've got his recorded version of Amateur Radio Newsline. From Amateur Radio Newsline report number 1830, here are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, September 12, 2012. A powerful storm called Typhoon Bolivan battered Korea on August 27th and 28th. 
Then on August 31st, a major earthquake occurred off the coast of the Philippines. Responding to both disasters were ham radio operators equipped to provide emergency communication. The South Korean State Disaster Management Agency reported 10 deaths as a result of Typhoon Bolivan. It was the strongest storm to hit the country for almost a decade and left hundreds of thousands without electricity and suffering property damage. It also churned up rough seas that smashed two fishing ships into rocks off southern Jeju Island. When Bolivan hit, emergency traffic between the affected areas kept flowing to the authorities via its D-90 IK two-meter repeater. At the height of the severe weather outbreak, almost two million South Korean homes and businesses were without power or telephones. Meantime, the strongest earthquake in more than two decades, measuring 7.6 on the Richter scale, hit the Philippines on August 31st local time. Almost immediately after the event, members of the HAM Emergency Radio Operations Group were exchanging messages with the affected coastal areas. Many HAMs in the affected areas showed up on 2 meters and 40 meter emergency channels. The Philippine National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council initial assessment was that there was no major structural damage in the affected areas. It noted that most structures destroyed were built from light material. Some good news for users of the low end of 40 meters. The Radio Society of Great Britain reports that Radio Bangladesh has left 7.105 megahertz after the broadcaster finished its experimental transmissions and is now using 7.250 megahertz in the shared portion of the band. The move is likely due to the many amateur radio operators worldwide who reported the infringement on the band. Particular thanks go to the German Telecommunications Authority, which filed the official complaints to Radio Bangladesh. If you were wondering about the strange band conditions this past week, you can blame it on the sun. This after a coronal mass ejection hit the Earth's magnetic field at approximately 1200 UTC, Monday, September 3rd. According to SpaceWeather.com, the impact induced measurable ground currents in the soil of northern Scandinavia and sparked bright auroras around the Arctic Circle. In fact, at the time the alert was issued, a moderately strong geomagnetic storm that lasted several days was underway. For current and future information on what the sun is up to and how it might affect radio propagation here on Earth, visit SpaceWeather.com for the very latest updates. According to a posting on Facebook by the lead character of the situation comedy Last Man Standing, as soon as it gets closer to the show's season two premiere of Friday, November 2nd, they'll be holding a combined HF, VHF, UHF, and D-Star ham radio operating event. This will put all the amateur radio gear used on the show and the licensed staff members on the air for you to contact. The show's producer is John Amadeo, NN6JA. He's just uploaded to Facebook close to a dozen photos of the new outdoor antenna installation on the roof of the Studio City, California soundstage, where Last Man Standing is recorded. If you're on Facebook, you can see them by putting the words Last Man Standing Season 2 Antenna Farm into the search line at the top of any Facebook page. For those of you who have not yet seen the show, Last Man Standing follows the adventures of Mike Baxter, played by actor and comedian Tim Allen. Baxter's character is the director of marketing at an outdoor sporting goods store in Denver, Colorado, whose world is dominated by women. This is especially true at home with his wife and three daughters. His hobby turns out to be amateur radio, with Baxter using the call letters KA0XTT. Last Man Standing airs on ABC. And that's all from Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news brought to you each and every week for 35 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. 73, Don. Good to see you again. And it's time now for Smoke and Solder. If you remember last week, I began building an MFJ shortwave radio receiver kit. Well, this week I finish it and we test it out. Last week on Smoke and Solder, I began building the MFJ 8100K world band receiver. We built the band switch and tuning section, and we built the RF amplifier and detector section. This week, we're going to build the audio amplifier and finish out the kit with the larger components. Here's a quick look at the schematic and the three different sections that we're working with. Now, for the audio amplifier, I'm going to begin by putting the IC socket on the board. Now, you'll notice on the left-hand side of the socket, there's a little notch cut in it. The pin right below that is pin 1. Now, the drawing on the board itself shows a notch as well, so we put it in that orientation. And when we put the chip into the socket, we'll notice a notch as well. And then there's a little circle down there that indicates where pin 1 is. We don't want to get this in backwards. Now we'll move on and install the five electrolytic capacitors. And as I mentioned last week, these are polarized, so be certain that you observe polarity when you put them in the holes. And now I'll do a little speed soldering.
After we've soldered all the capacitors and trimmed the leads, it's time to install all the resistors. Now there are several jumper wires that we need to put on that connect the various sections of the project together. We won't really show these being put in because they're fairly straightforward and hard to mess up. Now LEDs are polarized like capacitors and diodes and such and there's a flat side on the LED. You want to match that up with the flat side drawn on the board. Now it's time to install the switches and connectors and such. There are two headphone jacks that we install on the back of the unit and solder those in. Then we'll install the power switch, which is a push-on, push-off type. We'll install the 250-ohm volume control. Now in this kit, there was actually a 300-ohm volume control, but that's fine. That's plenty close. And then we'll install the 10K-ohm regeneration control. Now I'm going to put a little solder over the center pad for this pot before I put it in. That way I can just heat up that solder and slide the pot into place so it won't fall out while it's upside down and I'm trying to get it on the board. Now the tuning control capacitor C1 has six pins on the bottom of it. Four are on the case. The front two we won't use so we'll bend those out of the way and then we'll position the capacitor on the board and solder it into place. Next will be the band switch which fits over to the left hand side of the capacitor. We'll mount it and solder it. And then we've got the 9 volt battery clip which is fairly straightforward to install. And now we've got the toroid coil which this will be good practice because the next three kits that we build on the show are going to have similar coils in them. We wind it according to the instructions in the manual. And basically we're going to have eight turns wrapped around here. And we need to make those turns as tight as possible and get the spacing even on them as well. Now if this moves it will change the tuning of the circuit. So here's a little smoke and solder trick. We'll use a little hot glue to hold this coil into place on the board. Now it's time to check all our connections and make sure that we have the proper components in the right places. After we're sure of that, then we'll move on to the next step, which they say to use the double-sided tape included with the kit to install the 9-volt battery clip. However, I've got a warm hot glue gun sitting here and I think that'll probably do a better job. So we'll squirt a little hot glue on there as well and stick that to the board. Now before that glue has a chance to cool and set up, I'll take a screwdriver and wipe away some of the excess. And now the moment of truth has arrived. We can do a preliminary test on the receiver. I've connected the battery and an antenna lead as well as an audio amplifier here. And let's do a little tuning. Now that we know it works, we can move on to installing the unit inside the cabinet. The first thing we'll do is mount the two standoffs in the rear of the cabinet and then we'll put the four rubber feet inside to hold the board up off of the cabinet. We'll need to take the nut off the band switch and you should be careful when you're doing that because there's a programming ring around there that has to be in a particular position uh, just follow the instructions on that step to ensure you've got that correct. And now we can slide the PC board into the chassis. We'll do that carefully so that we don't uh, bend any of the controls in the process. Once it's in place, we'll secure it with a couple of screws in the back on the standoffs. And we'll put the nuts around all the controls on the front after we've installed the front panel. Once we've got all the hardware in place, we can start putting the case on top of the unit and get a look at the finished product. Now it's time for the final testing. We'll turn the regen control up until it starts to feed back and then back off just a hair. And then we'll turn the tuning knob until we've got a station. We'll work between the tuning knob and the regen control to get the best result. 
actuaciones un tanto sorprendentes son bueno atributos a Radamel García que es el padre de, Rama, de Radamel Falcao So there you have it. The MFJ 8100K World Band Shortwave Receiver Kit. And it did actually work, which is good. Uh, I've been fortunate lately. Most things have worked. That's not always the case. But if you go back and check your work, you'll usually find what you did wrong. And if you're lucky, you won't have to order any more parts for it. Uh, we've got some upcoming builds here on Smoke and Solder over the next uh, several weeks. The first one we're going to build, and we'll begin this next week. We've been talking about it for a while now, and that's the Open Beacon Kit. I'm going to build a 30-meter kit, and you can get that at etherkit.com. Next up, we'll be building the MFJ 913K 4 to 1 Ballon. MFJ has produced a kit just for you smoke and solder fans. If you'd like to build that, uh, check out mfjenterprises.com and you'll find that kit. And after that, and I'm not sure of the date yet because uh, we're going to take our time on these and do them right so everyone at home can follow along, uh, it'll be the Soft Rock RXTX Ensemble. And that's a nice little software defined radio. I have built three of these before. This is one of the latest models. Looking forward to that. And you can find that at 5-.com. Now, Ray Novak should be joining us here now to give away that IC7000, the Comet Antenna Package, and the Diamond Antenna Package. Good evening, Ray. Good evening, George. Uh, just finished getting another uh, DX entity in the lock, so good to be with you guys. Yeah, you're there in the uh, ICOM ham shack tonight, huh? Yeah, I had to move over here because of the internet connectivity going through our main system was just too bogged down, even at uh, 630 at the night here. So went to the ham shack. We have a clean DSL in for the DX clusters and been having a little bit of fun while you guys have been showing the stations. And I wasn't sure if you'd hear me on that regen kit or not. Uh, no, I didn't hear you on there. I tuned around, but I didn't know what frequency you would be on. <laughs> well, let's give away this uh, this prize package here, right? Who is our lucky winner? Uh, Casey Baldwin is our winner. It was really close. A lot of people coming in at the last minute to, to join in and cast their votes. But uh, Justin, I'm sorry I don't have the call signs in front of me, gave him a good run for his money. Yeah, Casey is KC7CPJ. He had 236 votes. And the first runner-up was uh, Justin Pike, KJ4AXF, with 208 votes. And I believe we had some pictures here, but I don't know if Alex uh, got those or not. Apparently not. Well, yeah, there's Casey's. That's the winner. He installed it in the uh, roof of a van up there and did a neat job on that installation. And then Justin had a nice installation there, too, and I believe that's in a Volvo, and he did all that himself. There were so many great radios, um, mobile installations installed, that uh, we just wanted to take a look at some of our favorites. And, Ray, I believe that your favorite was KA2DUT, wasn't it? Yeah, we're actually showing uh, Michael Demita's uh, installation right now. It's not the fact that he's got a 7,000 and he's he's hacked into the video screen, but it's more that he's got in a Prius. And um, there's a few folks that I know that have tried to run HF in a Prius, and those things are so noisy. But uh, Michael was able to figure out how to make that work, a nice installation of the screwdriver on the back. And uh, very, very clean install. Um, I would say my second favorite, though, I mean, uh, N7XS, Dean uh, Holton did a real nice job. I know there was blood, sweat, and tears, and probably a few swear words on doing the installation for the mount for his HF antenna. But th those two were the ones that really caught my eye, and I was impressed with. Which one was yours, George? Well, I really like Michael's there. Uh, that video screen just sold it for me. But I guess my favorite one is, I was thinking more is better. 
So KC7, <laughs> TDG, uh, Donald had a fantastic-looking setup there. <laughs> Look at all those radios, Gordo. And it's heads up. In fact, almost all of these installations, I think every single one was heads up. That is impressive. And if hey, you Gordon, look on the road, I know you have done the Baker to Vegas race. That almost looks like the radio installation that uh, uh, the Joy. Com one. Yeah, Joy. I couldn't think of her name there. She'll kill me when she sees us. But uh, Joy you. calls it the Tower of Babel. Yeah, that uh, I think that is Joy's installation. And, you know, that's not just for look and see, but uh, during the Baker to Vegas race, she's all over each one of those radios with several other radio ops. And, again, love that heads-up display that all of these lucky winners were able to accomplish. And there's the AV map that goes with uh, many of the products as well. Well, yeah, the, so the installation that George is showing here is, is your favorite. Uh, is a very practical installation. I, I've seen the guy at some of the local ham fests here in the Bellevue, Washington area. He's uh, part of the search and rescue team for, I believe, King County. And I, I know I'll get corrected in the in the chat room if I'm wrong on that. But uh, he he does a lot of uh, events out here, so he's ready to go when when they need help. Yeah, that was. Uh... That was a great one. Uh, of course, if you're going to have that many radios, you got to have that many antennas, too. But there were just so many. It was uh, hard for us to make our uh, favorite picks out there. And our favorite picks, you know, aren't what determined who won. That was done through uh, voting on our uh, Smoke and Solder Facebook group. But that was just a look at uh, two that Ray and I thought were special. But there were so many other special ones on there. You really ought to go take a look at the group and uh, look through the photo albums there. You'll get a lot of good ideas on doing your own mobile installations. So in that sense, the contest has done what we wanted, hadn't it, Ray? Yes, it definitely has. It, it's, And I'm hoping that people will continue posting. I know I got an email from Michael from VK Land that he had an interesting installation. Nice photos. Hopefully he posts it up there and others get... Uh, ideas on what to do because you, you really don't have to invest a lot of money. Uh, if you got friends that can help you, that helps out a lot. And as we saw in the other mobile installation, bonding, bonding, bonding. Exactly. A lot of good hints there, so go check them out. Ray, thank you and ICOM so much, and also Diamond and Comet for putting this contest on. Someone's, and that's Casey, want a really nice uh, radio set up there for their mobile or wherever they want to use it. And uh, pr we appreciate everyone who participated in the contest, whether you uploaded your photos or you went through and made your likes known. We appreciate you participating. Ray, thanks again for being with us tonight, and thanks for supporting Ham Nation. Oh, I'm glad to help and, and anyway, let as many people know about this great hobby. I know I've had a blast with it over the 20-something years that I've been doing it. That's great. And uh, I guess we've been hams about the same length of time because I came in in 91. So uh, we must have got licensed around the same time. Thanks again, Ray. We'll be talking with you, I'm sure, within the next week or so. And we'll be seeing you at that MFJ Day in the Park on October 5th and 6th. Well, yes, I will be there, and it's it's kind of a homecoming for me because right out of college, that's where I started working was for Martin. So I spent six years there and worked my way up their ladder and then got here at ICOM and did the same. Yeah, you're, you're one of MFJ's success stories for sure. Thanks, Ray. And I got a couple of other things here to give away tonight. Uh, first off, we're going to give away this QJE 30-amp switching power supply courtesy of Frank at CheapHam.com. Thanks for that, Frank. And I had a question last week. What did I do last week? Which was really two weeks ago. And Paul Griffith, KE5WMA, had the answer. And he said last week on Smoke and Solder, you showed how to install a Type-N connector. And he also said that he watched the show during Hurricane Isaac on a borrowed iPhone connected to the neighbor's Wi-Fi, or excuse me, Wi-Fi, running on a power generator. That's right, because he was in the New Orleans area. So thanks, Paul. You got the answer correct. Next week, we're going to give away another one of these MFJ 24-hour clocks that every ham really needs, because you can set that to universal time coordinated. 
And you know what time it is anywhere in the world. If you'd like to win that, then uh, tell me what band of frequencies are right below the shortwave band. And you can email your answer to hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and we'll give this clock away next week. So thanks, everyone, for participating in the contest. And let's bring in Cheryl now with the chat room. Cheryl, how are you tonight? I'm doing just wonderful tonight, uh, George. I'm very happy to be here with all of you. Uh, welcome, uh, all the people in the chat room and the pod podcast listeners. Uh, a big hello to you, too. I've got a couple questions, but I want to just check in with you to see what the show time we have available, George. Uh, I believe we probably have about four minutes. Okay. Is uh, Ray still available on, on one of the feeds? Uh, no, we had to drop him and call you. Sorry. Oh, okay, because I had a couple questions for him, but uh, that's all right. Um, I just wanted to uh, go over a, a, a for, for you, George, uh, we have Franklin, KD0RSJ. He wanted to know, did you happen to see recently on the new no, on the, on the new know-how show on Twit, they showed the basics of how to solder. Did you get a chance to see that? He wanted to know. I, I sure did, and uh, um, they did a great job there. But if you'd really like to learn a little bit more about soldering, you can go back, and I can't remember the number right now, but I showed it on uh, a previous episode of Smoke and Solder on Ham Nation and went into a little more detail. Oh, thank you for that. And, and Wicked Proxy wanted to know if a screwdriver antenna will adjust to a CB band antenna. And I believe the answer to that is yes, it will. I was thinking maybe perhaps the Tar Heel 2 screwdriver antenna. What do you think about that, George? Uh, I, I think it probably will, but our expert on CB and uh, screwdriver antennas here, Gordon West, probably knows the real answer. Well, sure. Most of the screwdrivers from Tar Heel and HiQ and so on, they're infinitely adjustable. So they'll go from 30 megahertz all the way down to the lower limit of that antenna. And again, it pretty much depends as to the feed point as to how well it's going to work on either ham bands or 27 megahertz uh, class D CB. But oh yeah, they are infinitely tunable. And if you've got a CB radio and a two position switch, you can switch it over, uh, add a little bit of, uh, let's see, no, you'd subtract a little bit of, no, you'd add a little bit of inductance to go down about <laughs> one megahertz uh, from 10 meters, and there you are on 11 CB. Back to you, Cheryl. Great, Gordo. And I have a comment from Skeeter, N5ASH. He says, when the, when he got a chance to see your hat, he says, Gordo looks like he stole that hat off of one of Ernest Tubbs' Texas tr troubadours. So I don't know what that, <laughs> what, where that came from, but that was a comment. And there was a question also for you too, Gordo. And I uh, hope you're having a great evening here. <laughs> I, he says, uh, we have Ira, W6ICL, he asks, um, if the Samlex RPS-1204 have enough power to run a mobile rig like the Yaesu VX1500M, Okay, and that's that? a good one. If that's a 12-amp average, it's probably 15 amps peak. And I wouldn't run it for a long period of time because it's going to get warm as a switching power supply would, as well as an analog one with a big transformer. But I think it should. I would normally run that Yezu, though, probably on medium power, just to make sure. Oh, great. And thanks for that. And maybe you might be able to answer this one on the ICOM. Since Ray is not in the feed here, uh, Gordo, you might be able to pick this up. Um, it looks like uh, they wanted to know N80XC. Chris, he, he writes, he wrote in, uh, does ICOM uh, anticipate any down conversion HF rig anytime soon? Is that something in the, on the horizon? Um, okay, down conversion for the ICOM HF radios. I'd probably have to let uh, Ray go ahead and talk it. about that. Uh, all of the major manufacturers, they'll go for about six months doing HF, and then they'll do VHF and UHF. So Ray will be our one on all of the new uh, gear that ICOM is coming up with. And certainly, hey, George, it was a surprise to me to see that it's either a dual bander or a two band VHF, UHF handheld. That'll do both D-Star digital as well as analog on each band. Pretty cool. New radio from ICOM. That is pretty cool, Gordo. 
And uh, Cheryl, we appreciate you moderating the chat room for us tonight. Uh, before we go any further, though, I just want to check and see if Bob and Clayton ever made it back in tonight. They did not. Sure. No? They did not. Okay, Cheryl, give us one final one there, if you would. And the final question goes out tonight. And they might not be able to answer, but maybe next for the next show, is Bob and Leo Laporte ever going to check in on the D-Star Ham Nation net? That came from a Web 1292 chat room viewer. But um, we, we want to know. They don't have to answer right now, but we'll just uh, send it back to you, George. It did a great job on your video tonight. And thanks, everyone, for watching Ham Nation. I'll be at Radio Expo in, in Belvedere, Illinois, this Saturday at the Ham Fest there. It's one of the better ones uh, in, in northern Illinois. So please come and see me at the Ham Nation booth. I'll be there. Thanks, Cheryl. Great to see you again tonight, and glad that uh, you hung around toward the end here so that we could get a few of those good questions from our viewers in there. Well, I guess that's going to be a wrap, everyone. Gordon, any final words from California? Well, I want to thank everybody for watching. We had some questions about the Ham Instructor website and how to get that Ham Instructor information as well as uh, all three classes of uh, the CDs that have PowerPoint on it. It is www.haminstructorsingular.com. Register, very easily done, and bingo. And about two weeks later, you'll begin to get flooded with training materials for new instructors because we want more new hams teaching other hams how to either upgrade or get on the air and have fun with ham radio. 73, haminstructor.com. Okay, George, back to you, and we'll see everybody next week. Going on the air right now on uh, 7268. We'll meet folks there on 40. Go ahead, George. Well, thanks, Gordo, and it was great to see you again tonight. And we got through the show one way or another, and we did manage to get Bob and Clayton in there with us for a little while mm -hmm. and uh, talk a little bit about the Professional Bull Riders Association. Well, we've got our nets coming up tonight, and you want to check in with those. If there's any way you can, join us on... Uh, well, let's see. I think Cheryl's probably going to be hanging around 80 meters at 3.847 megahertz or 3847 yep. megahertz. That's uh, correct. We'll, we'll have the 40-meter net on 7.268 and the 20-meter net on 14.268. And if you're into digital, join us on Echo Link at star, do drop in star, or node number seven, oh, excuse me, 355-800, or if you're into D-Star. Check us out on Reflector 14 Module C or listen at wx4adx.com slash listen. That does it for this week. Thanks, everyone, for joining us again, and we'll see you next week when I'll start building that 30-meter uh, open beacon kit. Good night. <laughs>